Hello everyone, welcome to RSPS YouTube channel. This video is exclusively recorded for this channel for those who, are, who want to familiarize with the Palm GHG calculator. There are three parts to this video um, in which you are watching part one. And part one is going to explain about data entry for plantation and estate. Part two is going to be on data entry for mail. And part three will be on how to utilize the desktop application. So having said that, part one and part two will solely be on the web application. If you have read the manual or you're reading the manual, then you are on the right track or else I would advise to read the manual. Uh, that way you will get on the same page with the content of this video. In case you're wondering, the manual is available on RSPO's website under the Palm GHG tab. And since I'm recording this from home, please excuse any occasional background noises. Um, and with that, let's get started. So I've logged into the web application of Palm GHG Calculator. I'm heading to Mills. I have prepared some mock database that I am going to recycle from previous training session. Now, uh, I want to drop a note, a quick note here to say that um, moving on from uh, July 2021, only the web application will be used to support RSPO certification purposes. The desktop application is solely for non RSPO certification purposes. It's for independent research, study, and etc. cetera. Um, anything apart from the certification, right? So I'm heading to 2018 summary. Uh, again, a mock database that has been prepared before, which I'm going to use for the purpose of today's tutorial. The first thing would be to set your default values. So there's one default figure that you must set, which is under mill, which is the electricity emission coefficient in row number 12. There you go. To get the figures here, all you do is click on the eye icon. You will have a list of coefficient that pops up and you can choose based on your country. So that's what I've done here. By clicking this pen icon, click save and the figure is reflected. Now, there are two other optional, um, I would say default figures that you can add, which would be for fertilizer. Um, in which case RSPO, uh, sorry, the palm calculator by default provides a set of default values if you like to introduce custom values and you can do so similar to how I've done here MPK12 test and also testing and the way to do this there are two approaches the first one is rather straightforward where you click on add button and that um, that uh, the add function would pop would prompt this form uh, to add a custom fertilizer so this is more of a straightforward way of uploading a new custom default uh, for fertilizer. Another way uh, would be through using a template. And, and this comes handy, especially when you want to reuse the same template for several other meals or even for the following year's um, assessment. So I'll show you a quick um, step on how this works. So you click on download template, which will prompt a Microsoft Excel file to be downloaded. Select the file. And the fertilizer template uh, will look something like this. There you go. All right. Now scroll all the way to the left. And then you can start keying in um, the new custom figures. Once you have completed that, click, of course, click save. And then you can come to upload. Click upload. I have, um, again, prepared some more data which I'm going to try uploading, and you have upload success. Of course, this is the same uh, fertilizer which I've uploaded earlier. So you, again, you're seeing um, testing here, which is the mock fertilizer that I've, that I've showed, uh, which can be uploaded using the Excel method. The third default, um, which will be for land cover, is also optional if you would like to add um, other custom cover type, land cover types. Um, and to do so, you, you click on this add function and you have a straightforward way of adding. Uh, as for reference, what you have to provide would be uh, an article or a publication from a reliable source for what's the carbon value for the particular land cover type that you like to add. So that will be it in terms of setting up uh, the default values. So once this is done, we can start with data input. 
So to do so, I'm going to select edit here. Right. Now, what you see is um, there are three different types of um, mock estate data that I have created in advance for the purpose of this video. And to create this, what you do is first click on add record and you will be prompted by an FIB supplier information form. You can key in all the data, click save. And once you have done that, you'll, you'll have the set of FIB uh, suppliers, as you can see in this table. Uh, I'm going to show you two examples of how uh, the form differs. Uh, and one would be, the first one would be an own or a group estate, and the second one would be for a third party estate. So I'm going to select own estate here by clicking this pen icon or pencil icon. And what happens is, this opens up to the other tabs of information that must be keyed in to Palm GHG. Uh, please note that Palm GG is an annual reporting calculator, uh, hence you will require 12 months data to complete uh, this GHG uh, calculation, right? So if you notice earlier, um, the FAB supply uh, to this mail is noted, uh, sorry, it was pinned down as at 554 uh, as compared to the FAB production volume here. And the difference of 500 is coming from here. So this is a scenario, an example of a scenario where estate A has channeled 500 ton of FFB to this mill, the mill that we're keying the data for, and the other 500 uh, was channeled to a, a, a separate buyer, a buyer A. So that was keyed in here. And if you notice, this 500 has been added to FFB supply to this mill to total up to what is the FFB production volume in total. But ultimately, when it comes to calculating the emission, um, the final emission that's coming from, that's resulting from estate A, only 554 ton of FIB will be calculated against, right? So this is an own estate or a group estate uh, in which the second tab, the third party supplier tab, will not be active because this is exclusively for FIB that is being sourced from third party suppliers. So there isn't any action required here. We can proceed to planting data. Now with planting data, there are two ways as to how you can uh, approach the data entry process. One is a very straightforward, convenient way where you do not have, I would say uh, a huge volume of data. So you click on add record and then you have uh, a planting data record form that pops up. This is very straightforward. You click save and then you have a second row of planting data related information here. Now, if you have a bulk of data, then what you want to do is to click on download template in which again, an Excel template will be downloaded, which looks something like this. There you go. And once you have key in the data here, you can select upload and by selecting upload what happens is a new set of data will be uploaded so i'm i'm actually using the same set of data so you will not see any difference here um just just to uh add a few precautions precautionary steps here um whereby when you're using the excel template make sure you do not change the format if you're gonna copy information from a different excel sheet and paste it into this template, make sure, again, it's only uh, the value that are being imposed. The format is not being changed, right? Because all these things um, would, would trigger an error message when it comes to uploading the data. So you wouldn't want to change any of those. Next, if you notice, there is a 5.5 predetermined value for uh, what, constitute, what constitutes the other land use. The description of it is given in the eye icon here, which basically means that 5.5 percentage of uh, the other land use are coming from road ditches and mills. And then we proceed to the, the boxes that are in gray, which are uh, a sum, the final sum of information from planting data. And it's grayed out so that uh, user can see a difference between the cells that you can gain uh, a data as compared to cells that you cannot gain a data. Now, with that, we are heading next to fertilizer. 
Similar to planting data, Fertilizer also has a straightforward or a, con uh, a much convenient way of adding data where you click on add record. So this is pretty straightforward, save and you have, sorry. Once you have completed the data, you click, once you have completed the form, you click save and then you have your data reflected on this tab. Otherwise you can download template um, and then you have a fertilizer template uh, available where you can key in the data. And once you have uploaded, the list of data will appear here. Now, I just want to drop a note that uh, in case you do not have or you're not sure of what is the sea transport um, distance line, then you can use a default of about six, uh, then you can use a default of 6,000 kilometers. Uh, while for smallholders, if you're not sure of the road transport dis distance, then you can go with a default of 200 kilometers, right? Moving on to fill fuel, where uh, generally, the add record method is simple because there isn't much of data. Uh, at most, there are only two rows of data when it comes to field fuel. So it's either diesel or petrol, key in the volume, save, and then you will have your data appearing here. Uh, I would also encourage user to read the information in this info box here, which explains um, what are the activities that should be included and what are the activities that are not included within the boundary of calculation. Now, moving on to P. With the P tab, um, if you notice, all the boxes are in gray, uh, mainly because this information is automatically pulled out from planting data. Um, so if you notice in planting data tab, I'm just going, I'm, I'm gonna go back to show you how it works. So I've, I've added 50% um, here to know that 50% of the planted area is on P, hence why, this information has been transferred into the peat tab to show that to show that fifty percent of the planted area is on peat, which which comes up to about one hundred fifty hectare, and then with water level maintained at sixty cm, which is a, a good water management according to RSPO uh, BMP, and then you will get your emission calculated uh, for this area that is planted on peat. Now, if you select on this eye icon, you'll be able to change. Um, the water level, right? Um, or to even include the actual measurements. So I'm gonna save this and move on to crop sequestration. With crop sequestration, it's fairly straightforward. There are two types of growth that are commonly used by users, which is vigorous and average growth. Vigorous growth is advised for bigger growers, companies to use, whereas average, whereas average growth would be applicable for smallholders. So uh, I'm leaving it at vigorous growth, but please remember, although you didn't make any changes, to click save on this, right? And then moving on to the last tab, which is on conservation. Um, and with conservation tab, uh, all you have to do is to fill in this one area, one cell here that is not shaded in gray. And that would be uh, a regional average carbon sequestration, carbon sequestration for conservation area. I have selected 9.17 here for Southeast Asia. Once that is done, you click save, and then you head to summary page for estate A, which will give you a list of emission resulting from estate A's operation. And if you would like to know how these figures are appearing, you can select, uh, you can click on calculation sheet, which contains formula for um, how the emissions are being calculated from planting data up to N2 emission for peak, right? So that is uh, a very quick walkthrough of how data entry for plantation or estate is done, which is part one of this video. Now there's gonna be part two of this video, which will explain on how mill operation uh, data is being keyed in. So this is a typical scenario of data entry if you are using a mill database. There are also independent estates uh, who are using farm GHG for certification purposes. Um, the only difference for a no mill database is your data entry process stops here. You will not be able to see this um, if my cursor is visible. Basically, you will not be able to see extraction up to compost um, since these are mill related data. So you have to key in FIB and then you have your summary uh, of your estate and your data entry ends there. So that's about it for part one of this video. And in part two, we will look at how to do mill 
um, mill operationals uh, data entry. Thank you.